Well, hello there. My name is Alex, but I'm also known as Chibi Yuto, and welcome to another video review of Clamps Doujinshis. In this video, I'll be doing the review of Doujinshi number 17, which is none other than Shoten 4. Uh, this was released in August of 1989, and the first thing you notice of this release is the package. So as you can see, it comes in a case. It's a paper case. I will get into more details uh, during the review itself. But you can see that Clamp has got a little more sophisticated with the packaging of their uh, Shoten series. As usual, when it comes to Shoten, Clamp are really, really careful and they really want to give the best, deliver it in the best way to the readers. They have consistently improved their design and package skills by each book, especially of Shoten, and it's no different for Shoten 4. This book is composed by nine stories. They were still seven members at the time. No, we didn't have two extra members. They were still seven, uh, but nine stories. There are two members who have two stories each. That's why you have nine, but still seven members. At that point, Clamp were already having a lot of uh, other jobs as professional manga artists. Uh, just to name a few, they were already uh, full on working on Ryu Veda, uh, Niju Mensoni Yonegai, also uh, Hagun Senseki, which uh, never was never compiled, but the, there was there were uh, a few chapters that was published, and they were already working on that. Not to mention the other uh, one-shot projects or collaborations that they were doing at the time. So, Clamp as a group, they they were they really were considering dropping entirely the the independent publication work to go fully professional, which eventually we all know they did. So, without any further ado of my part, let's check the review. All right, so this is the front cover. As you can see, there is a transparent plastic, uh, which kind of looks like a frame. Uh, up here, we have clamp book number 17. At the bottom, we have the name Shoten 4. And this one has like a subtitle, uh, I want to be an a only one. Uh, as you can see, it's a pretty thick book. It's like a case. This is the back side of the case. Uh, here, I, from what I could translate, it's kind of a summary of uh, what Shoten 4 is about. They're saying that it's really hard to make someone to like you uh, and they go um, around this concept, so which is, which is uh, really what Shoten is all about, like a, um, love stories basically. Uh, here there is a stamp, uh, original, there is a cute mistake, spelled with a J instead of a G. Uh, summer of 1989, and when you remove the case, there is actually some, um, some small damages in the case, uh, sorry, in the case, it came this way, I bought it second hand of course. Uh, so there's a minor damage here as well, but other than that, uh, it looks pretty good. So this is how the case looks on the inside. Um, over here, we have the real book. So the other, the bottom of the case, uh, let's put it this way. And the real book, the real cover, is like this. The spine reads Shoten 4. Uh, the usual tagline, it's not in serious, 1989 summer clamp. And this is the back side. Uh, as usual, you get uh, this composition is very, very common in Shoten series, as you may remember. You always have the like the, some couples here on the front cover and then at the back you have like uh, some filming crew or like the a more of a humorous side of the of the 
the, the illustration. And as usual, as they have been doing for a while, when you spread it like this, you have the full illustration. So the cover was drawn by many artists, I would guess. Like this is the couple from the Okawa stories, Okawa Nanase stories. These are, this is the couple from the Lisa Say stories. So the guy from Combination. This is the couple from Okona Papa stories. And this is the one, this is a character of Satsuki Igarashi. So you see it's a combination of many characters, like an all stars. So their book is really, really thick, as you can see. So they really put a lot of the efforts on Shoten. So let's start the review. Here there's like a, I think it's a prologue. Um, I don't know exactly. Then you have this uh, opening illustration, but the first story is not by by this uh, couple. It's not about this couple, so I really don't know. It's just a it's just an opening illustration, basically. There isn't a really a story about it. Uh, so here you have the actual index, and we can see nine stories, one from each member, and uh, except for. Mick Nikoi and Lisa say they have two stories each. Here the technical information. Uh, this was released on 1989, August, August 13 of 1989. So yeah, they were already pretty. Oh, they have uh, some special thanks here. Uh, I don't recognize any of the names, but they, they, they give special thanks to four people. And here you have the all presented by Clamp. So the first story is called Desert Fish. Uh, it's by Mokona Papa. So she opens the book as uh, this is pretty common between her and Lisa Say. So you have the usual couple from the from India, the, the two guys, the, uh, they, are, they are teachers from the Clamp school. This is the story. It looks better and better. It really looks like, you know, something that you'd see from Clamp in the um, in the 90s. That's the level of professionalism that they were at the time this was released. It's really impressive. It looks really professional. You don't see any more of the uh, speech bubbles uh, handwritten. It's all really typeset and paste it on the on the on the pages uh, you have this very typical clamp uh, layout page layout in this page in particular um, it's a pretty longish comic as you can expect all the stories in this book are kind of long so this one is going nearly 30 pages now Yeah, like it's almost over. Yes, it ends here with 36 pages. Is that it? Yes, 36 pages. And I also wanted to point out where you can find this character in Niju Mensoni Onegai. Uh, so this is volume one. And he appears right in the first story you have here. Uh, here. So Utako is uh, reminding herself about um, the teacher that turned her down basically and we can see him here also you can see uh, a portion of his face here and a bit after the title page the chapter title page as well you can see him as well there are other um, frames where they appear there is one where he's teaching a class or maybe it's the other one but you have to really, if you pay close attention, and I really uh, recommend you doing so, like grabbing your copies and try to look for them, like a see like a treasure hunt or an Easter egg hunt of of sort. So just so you see, just so you can uh, see what I mean uh, that they appear in uh, other clamp works. 
So the next story is by Mick Nikoi. So this is the first story by her. She has another one. And I know, I don't remember right now if we've seen this couple before, but it looks a lot like Goho Drug here. Still Mick Nikoi. And it ends here. Next, we have Sena Nao. So it's interesting to point out that we have a, in the middle of the book a color page. So this is not very common for their their other doujin sheets, but it's pretty. It's it gets more common in in shoten because they really put a lot of effort on the shoten series. So we have the characters that have appeared before in um, in Sena Nao's stories, especially this guy here, you can recognize him probably. So still Sena Nao. hope I'm going too fast. It's just that the book is really long, so I'm trying not to, you know, take a lot of time. But you can always pause, I guess. So it's a pretty long story as well, and it ends here. Then we have the second story by Mick Nikoi, also with a color title page. And this coloring style is very, very like Mick McCoy, I would say. And here we have the couple that we, well, I am more, more familiar with this couple and the dog. We've seen them before in previous stories, so they make a comeback, of course. As usual for short and series, you always get to see uh, what happens to these characters. You can follow them in their stories. Still Mick Nikoi, and it ends here. Then on this one, it's by Satsuki Igarashi. And once again, I am not sure if the, the title page, which is also color, as you can see, was drawn by her. I would say yes. It looks very similar to the previous um, stories by Satsuki Igarashi. But it also looks similar to Tamayo Akiyama. So, Take this with a grain of salt, but I have strong, um, I have stronger feelings that this is by Satsuki Garashi. So it's a it's a novel as usual for Satsuki, but there are some cut scenes in the middle of it, and it's a pretty long novel as well. And it ends here. Then this one, uh, Twilight Square, also with a colored title page. Uh, it's by Tamayo Akiyama. So you see it's kind of similar to the Satsuki Garashi uh, illustrations. But it could also be that they were sort of influenced by each other at the time. So I'm not sure, but I think it was by Satsuki. So here is uh, Tamayo. You can see that she has reached a very pro level as well. Also long comic. Reaching the end. And it ends here. Then we have in the middle of the book, 
uh, the newspaper section. So there is uh, a cute illustration with the seven members of Clamp. So we have here Okawa Nanase, Mokona Papa, Tamayo Akiyama, Seina Nao with her very long hair, um, Satsuki Garachi, and then for these two, I'm not sure, uh, one of them is Mik Nikoi and the other is Lisa Say. I would guess this one is Mik Nikoi because uh, she's holding the the alligator and it's uh, kind of a, her character, like she as a, a mascot designer. And I would say this one is uh, Lisa Say, but it could also be the other way around, okay? So the staff page, listing all seven members, uh, and they have uh, one character that represents them. They also put the Clamp Campus as a character, like as a staff member, which is really interesting. I guess to, to complete the grid, you know, because otherwise there would be a gap here. Um, then there are some stories, like this is the modern, you know, you have an Instagram these days, like the stories feature. Uh, so this is like stories, except that they don't expire in 24 hours. It's like the highlights. Uh, so I tried to translate some of them and I was really successful actually. Uh, this one I, I didn't translate, but this one, uh, they were talking about food basically. <laughs> So I didn't go into much details, but they were really saying that Clint loves food and going out to have dinner, uh, to have food. And uh, they, they mentioned McDonald's somewhere. Over here, they were saying about, they were talking that uh, Okawa was actually, well, first of all, they all moved to Tokyo. Set six of them moved to Tokyo and only say Nanao stayed in Osaka. And Okawa actually was attending Tokyo University, University of Tokyo at that time. Uh, they mentioned uh, Satsuki working for a design company. Um, they also mentioned Mik Nikoi working as a character designer and Mokona and as an illustrator. I'm not sure if they mean within Clamp or they were having a part-time job uh, with these kinds of, of, of works. Um, it's not clear to me, but this is what they were saying. They were mentioning that Sei Nanao would come visit them in Tokyo really soon. On this story here, they were saying, they were talking about a uh, recent uh, visit that they, well, not visit, they, they recently went to, uh, to watch the Phantom of the Opera play, uh, stage play, I, I believe, and they were talking about it, basically. So this we have uh, the CN column is just basically um, information about their their like sales I think like where to find their their, their books uh, like advertisements basically. Here there is a report of the dance party. I mentioned on my previous video that there would be an event. This is that this is probably probably was the first uh, clamp event and they had um, this guest uh, which was is a singer I think and they this is pretty much the report of the event how it went this is the singer I think this is saying on our um, here there is a, a comic about from what I could get uh, samurai troopers and after after recording so it's like the dubbing section of the samurai troopers anime i think it was airing at the time and they were big fans we've seen that they did doujinshi about it so i don't i didn't translate but it's probably i don't know if they met them or something or they were just uh, fooling around with with the with the voice actors i'm not sure and here there is a commerce schedule that, that listed some of the works that Clamp were working at the time. And so this is the pre, uh, before Clamp 
official website, there was this, you know, all the schedule was announced in paper format, like newspapers. And there are some really uh, gems here, like they were announcing the the column that they had on New Time magazine where they would recommend uh, OVAs, club members, I mean. Uh, they were announcing Ligo Veda chapters in South magazine and also in Wings. They were announcing combination chapters. Uh, I, I brought some of the stuff that they announced here and I wanted to show you. So they were announcing um, a chapter in, in Genki magazine, Comic Genki. They announced the Shurato. Where is it? Oh, here. So in this uh, magazine, which is also the magazine that published Dukarion and Niju Mensoni Onegai, they had this one shot about Shurato. And so they were announcing it. This was not published, any, published anywhere. It's not collected in a, um, any art book or anything. So this, the script is by Okawa and the art by Mokona Papa. So it's a very, it's just a short story. So it's announced here at the, in this doujinshi. So I just wanted to show you guys. Another thing that they announced at that, uh, the thing I showed you before is the Hagun Senseki chapter. So I have a copy here. I think this is chapter, I don't remember if it's four or three. Let me see. Um, I don't remember. I have a chapter here. It's probably three or four or two. So this is also a series that was not published anywhere. It was discontinued by Clamp because there was a similar story uh, being published and Clamp didn't want to, um, you know, be uh, have any problems with that. But they, they published a total of four or five chapters, something like that. And yes, you've seen some familiar faces. You have Yuto here, you have his sisters, his sister, sorry. So this is a story, it's really rare. And it's, uh, oh, also um, Suo is here as well. And so this story never was never published in book formats. There are only five chapters, I think. And they were announcing one of these, the chapters in uh, Magazine Kids. Also, they were announcing this greeting book for Shining Star, which features, it's like a, a greeting book for uh, Niju Mensoni Onegai. And it's a really cute book. There are uh, some stories and illustrations. I really like the format. It's very unusual because it's very narrow and thin. Uh, and the art is really beautiful. It's not uh, colored, but the, it's really gorgeous and the layout is really nice. Um, so this is one of so this that I just showed you all those things were some of the very early stuff that Clamp released, uh, not as amateurs but as professional artists, and they were all announcing it here. So as you can see. Uh, while they were doing doujinshi, they were already full on on professional uh, jobs for real publishers, and, and etc. So I can imagine that it was really hard for them to conciliate both things. And here at the bottom, there's a, a message from Clamp. They were pretty much summarizing what was going on with them. They they were saying that. Um, it's, it had been uh, three years, uh, sorry, three months since the last release. Uh, they were saying that they have been living in Tokyo. Well, six, six of them were living in Tokyo for about um, five months uh, at the time this was published. So they mentioned again that Okawa went to uh, the, the Tokyo University. Uh, they mentioned that uh, Tamayo Akiyama was working 
Satsuki went to the, the d- design company, you know, all the things that I already mentioned. Uh, they were saying that Okawa, Akiyama, Nikoi, and Satsuki were all living alone, and that Mokona, I think, and, and Isa, uh, I think they were sharing a house. I'm not 100% positive. So they were talking about clamp and the meaning of it, and I mean the meaning as a group, you know, not not the name, not the title. Uh, that they were getting a lot and lot and lot more involved in uh, professional jobs, so that you know they were excited about the future. That sort of message, and I think it's really nice. It's really it really captured captures the the moment that they were living, and it gives a nice. Um, sends a nice message to their their readers at the time. Then there is the uh, Okawa Nanase novel uh, with also a spread and a color spread. This one's called Sting 2 because as you remember there, the first one came out in the, the previous volumes, sorry the previous volume Oshoten I think. Once again, I am not sure if this was drawn and painted by Okawa because they don't mention, but I would guess so until proven otherwise. You see the illustrations, they look very similar to the ones we've seen before. It's a very uh, long novel as well. And it's interesting how each story had at least one color page or well each member because Nikoi had one without uh, a color page but since she had two stories one of them actually did have a color page so you see it's uh, clearly a love story with twists of course and very long and it ends with a kiss a passionate kiss for those who say that there are no kisses in clamp works then we have this one by lisa say which is um the first one for this book and it's it's uh interesting because it's called just a little bit but here there's like a subtitle sting tree so i don't know if it has anything to do with uh the previous stories the previous story sorry by okawa the character really looks like um, the same. This one really looks like uh, this guy, so maybe. Um, so yeah, she had, uh, Lisa say, like Nikoi, she had two stories in this volume, so this is the first one. It's a bit shorter. Actually, no, it's quite... Uh, Quite long. Yeah, I'm pretty positive that it's the same characters, but um, in a different perspective. Since they this is they are drawn by Lisa Say this time. And it ends here. Then we have uh, a final story by Lisa Say. This one, yes, is much shorter and she has a color page too. So it's official, yes, each member had one color page. It's nice. So this we go back to her usual couple, you know, the guys from the cover page here. Um, and this story, there's actually a, a very typical clamp element because this guy, who is also this one, apparently loses an eye. So you see, he has a, his a right eye is bleeding. His boyfriend's taking care of him. And we're reaching the end. And it ends here and apparently there's like an omake as usual so she's been doing that for 
for a while now with these stories. So this is the final page. Um, it's kind of a final message or of some sort. So that's it. Sorry if the video was too long, but as you can see, it's a pretty thick book, uh, 200 and almost 50 pages. But this is Chopin for you in all its glory. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. Uh, in case you don't know, I have a website about Clamp. The address is chibiuto.com. I invite you all to visit and interact. Until next time, bye.